Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to on today's episode. Oh, man. We're talking about AEW's locker room reaction to Tony Khan's unhinged tweets. It's a real Tony controversy, Larson. Oh, very punny. Very punny. Uh, Also, we're going to talk about how Sting's last match in AEW is sort of coming together and how the opponents were decided. Uh, But first, oh man, if this match actually does happen, Larson, it'll be the match of the millennium. Uh, Andre versus Hogan, uh, Rock versus Hogan, Rock versus Roman Reigns. Uh, but it's sort of an if it's going to happen and where the hell it's going to happen. Where? So what think, we got yeah, yeah. I mean, yesterday the Rock said something on Instagram like he was all in to go all out on the return to WWE. So he seems invested. But for anyone who's hoping that the Rock versus Roman Reigns is going to happen at Elimination Chamber, it seems like as of now, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer, the Wrestling Observer himself, reports, quote, regarding the Reigns versus Rock match, while I presume this WrestleMania could possibly be a three-way with Rhodes, but I don't think that will come out until many weeks from now. What we did have confirmed is the Australia rumors aren't accurate. Reigns is not even scheduled for the show. He's never been advertised, and there are no plans for him for that date right now. Of course... As, as with anything in wrestling, plans could change, cards subject to change. Yeah. But here we are about a month, uh, about six weeks out from that show. No word of Roman. Uh, uh, so, you know, th- I was pessimistic. I know there's a lot of people hopeful that they get Rock versus Roman Elimination Chamber because that would open the door for Rock, or sorry, Roman and Cody at Mania, and Cody could finish the story. And I understand that. I think a lot of people are invested, especially after what happened at WrestleMania last year, and Cody finishing his story this year because if he doesn't have, if it doesn't happen this year, then when? When? At WrestleMania. So, that being said, I've I've been on the pessimistic side that Rock Roman is going to happen in Elimination Chamber for a variety of reasons. Been through it plenty. Don't really need to revisit, I guess. But I could, in, in brief, might not be enough time for Rock to get ready. Uh, it's a card that starts at like uh, no two a.m. Uh, uh, here in the states, and uh, Elimination Chamber is a pay per view based on the stipulation match. The Chamber kind of sells itself, as we've seen with Survivor Series like this year. They didn't have Roman on that show because they thought the War Games stipulation matches could sell the, the show them itself. WWE doesn't go to Australia very often. It's going to be a massive crowd whether Rock Roman happens there or not. Yeah, I mean, it seems unlikely. Not impossible, but unlikely. Yeah, it seems it now. It seems I, I'm sort of leaning towards probably Nia Jax versus uh, Rhea Ripley as the main event there in Perth. Mm-hmm. I mean, God, you want how many? I don't know how many people are fitting that stadium, but you want a lot of people. Probably sixty. 60 yeah, that's what I was I thinking. Yeah, so. like sixty thousand people, like just completely going ape shit for Rhea Ripley versus like you know arguably the biggest heel that they have in the women's division. Um, I know I'm probably leaving somebody out, but. Uh, so, yeah, I guess it makes a little more sense. While I was showering today, getting myself clean, Larson, um, I had a thought. I'm going to mm. dive into conspiracy theory territory Interesting. Now. All right. All right. Because I don't think it's going to happen at WrestleMania either. It, when, a point that you make makes a lot of sense. The fact that look at him and look at what is required to do an actual wrestling match, and they kind of yeah. don't fit, right? Yeah. I personally don't think that. Unless he was really like focused right now, getting started, even WrestleMania is kind of lofty goal for like how freaking jacked he is. Yeah, yeah. Granted, you know it's it's six additional weeks, so we're looking at like whatever three months or whatever, a little roughly, bit less yeah. than three months right now. Yeah, but roughly three months. Yeah. So like he's disciplined. He's got all the best professional uh, uh, personal Absolutely. trainers, trainers in, the in the world. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. could get it done. And you're probably right about Elimination Chamber. Probably more difficult to get it done there. But something that really struck me about his, uh, and I'm about to take the scenic route here, Larson, so strap That's in. fine. Take your time. I'll sit here and drink my tea for my number one dad mug. I'm going to forget you said that for now. Uh, 
I noticed about his Instagram, the, right. the, the social media post that you referenced. And it's a really well put together, ambitious one. It's not just him standing next to Triple H or a, a side by side with him and Roman Reigns. It says this. These electrifying nights are so special and unforgettable. The connection with the people, the energy, vibe, authenticity, disruption, love, mana, Ooh, mana, the chills. And now we make history raise the bar and do things that have never been done before in WWE. We go all out, all out and all in. And I don't think that's a reference to AEW. People's champ. This seems a bit more ambitious than a single match, Larson. Oh, so confirm The Rock's going to beat Roman at WrestleMania. Uh, no, I don't even. I think he might make an appearance at Mania to set something else up. So what do we know about The Rock, Larson? <laughs> he's busy. There's an, there's an open-ended question for him. He's you. incredibly busy. He's got like 11 projects in the pipeline. Which he's, indicates what? He's ambitious, he's right? He's ambitious, yes. He had a whole sitcom. Where the premise was he's going to be a presidential candidate. People have talked about him meeting with, like, I don't know, the Pentagon or some weird shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some uh, governmental body, some office somewhere in Washington or the Washington area. Yeah. So keep all that in mind, right? I feel like I need the I need the bulletin board with the push pins and the red It might get there. This. It might get there. Um, it could be a complex web you're weaving, Steve. What else is he getting into right now? He's getting into sports, right? Oh, the he UFL, combined yeah. The XFL with the other FL, and he's USFL. He's, thank you. He's created the UFL, which is designed to well. Who else do we know loves to put a lot of money into sports, Larson? Vince McMahon, the Saudi Arabian government. Oh, sorry, yes. And who do we also know digs deep into American politics? The Saudi Arabian government, Larson. <laughs> So, I kind of feel like this is all going to be basically both Saudi shows are going to feature Rock versus Roman Reigns. That's my, that's, I, there's like a lot more I could say there. But now that I think about it, I'm like, man, this guy wants to be president of the United States, deal with the Saudi Arabians, build up a business portfolio that he could run his campaign on. And it's all going to start with a couple of wrestling matches where he's running ropes. But I kind of feel like it's going to be the Saudi thing. I think he's going to do, I think that the overwhelming fan sentiment is, they don't need the title. Rock versus Roman doesn't need the title. You and I have kind of disagreed on that. Or I'm sorry, you and I collectively have disagreed with that sentiment. Yes. But given that like 90% of the friendos when polled, and I think that's a relatively accurate sample size of the fans and could reflect also the views of the WWE. For chance, yes. The head of the table title is enough and doesn't need the universal title. If they do Rock versus Roman, what, a month or two in Saudi Arabia after Roman loses the title to Cody Rhodes, then Rock, uh, sorry, Roman can take all that time off until September or whenever they do the next one, revisit where Roman gets his, uh, his shit back. Meanwhile, The Rock is forging these connections so the Saudi Arabian government can do what they always do, and that's pump a bunch of money into, for example, the Live Golf thing, which then forced the, 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 the PGA to do whatever the hell they did with Live Golf. Um, so... Yeah, I kind of feel like it's just going to be both Saudi shows. I don't know. It's a lot, lot to wrap my head around right now. Well, I'll put it this way. Let's, we could dumb it down, too. Oh, yeah. No, I know. Saudi Arabian government has a shit ton of money. It's entirely possible that they just want The Rock on their show, and so they're going to do two shows, Rock versus Roman and Rock versus Roman. It's possible. It's possible. Simple. You That's know, they're, they're, yeah, I, and I, I, I obviously uh, the Saudi shows make a lot of money for WWE and, and they have brought a, a number of people back to the company or out of retirement, at least Shawn Michaels, uh, to get that huge paycheck. So it's not, you know, out of the stretch of the imagination. That's possible. Um, there's still something to be said about the prestige of WrestleMania, you know, and, and having the match on the grandest stage of them all. Nonetheless, let's talk about this idea uh, uh, Melser floats here about it being a triple threat at Mania. Good or bad idea? I personally don't like it. I, I understand there's a pattern every 10 years. I personally am, am a guy who thinks it should be one-on-one. -on -one, you know, like, I think the only time that I really think that that would have been, you know, effective would have been uh, Rock Cena Punk um, instead of doing second in a lifetime. You do that match back in 2014 or whatever, or 2013, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um because punk represented 
an element of WWE fandom that didn't that that was not represented in that match. You had The Rock representing, you know, one aspect of WWE fandom, Cena the other. Punk was a very specific thing, and I think he represented a specific area of fandom for WWE, and that's why I think that should have been a triple threat. This one, I just don't I, I think that it should be I mean, I guess the case could made that it could be made that it elevates Cody to rock Roman level just by virtue of being in that match with them. But rock social media post right here makes me think, and also what he said before on the Pat McAfee show, how he wanted to start something that had never been done before. And, and, and to me, that sounded like a multi-match series and a one-off at WrestleMania. I don't know. Could they start a WrestleMania? Sure. And then take it to a Saudi show. That's a possibility as start well. Yeah. But um, but I don't know. I'm I'm pessimistic still. Look, if they, if they bust it out, uh, right after the Rumble, that it's gonna be Rock Roman. Okay, you know I I could believe it. I'm just you know kind of pessimistic that that's gonna be the place where it happens. But I could totally be wrong. You know I agree with the other triple threat aspect. You're taking two stories that don't need to cross over. Cody finishing his story. You know the 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 title of head of the table between Rock and Roman. You, those stories don't need a dovetail, and it's, it's going to be should either. And they shouldn't know, and it'd be a, a bit awkward to kind of shoehorn Cody into this story and match they've been trying to get for years. Does Cody? Does Cody then try to uh, become like? Does that make him head? If Rock is vying for this title, yeah, which is also head of the table. Like, look, Cody wants one thing. He wants that WWF title. He yep. wants the one that his dad didn't oh, get. I got the solution. Okay. You get this is how oh, you do two it. out of you three do, falls. Yes. <laughs> One for the actual title. Yeah. The other for the title of head of the table. Cody wins the first tall he could fall, he leaves. I exactly. got what he I want. Belt. <laughs> I, I'm out. I'll be honest with you. I don't need Jimmy dancing in my background or solo going around spiking people being awkward conversationally. I don't want that. I got my fall. Peace, guys. I'm good. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That could be. So I don't know, man. Like, I know I took a silly conspiracy theory route to get to the whole Saudi thing, but I don't know. That's just the way my brain works. And I do think that I do think that this social media post, like it, to me, it doesn't say I'm just going to do a WrestleMania match. I don't know. It just it doesn't scream that to me, but I could be totally wrong. You know, man. I don't know totally exactly wrong. what his. He says this is the first time he said it. You mentioned the interview he did where, you know, he alluded that he wanted to beat Roman. Do something that's never been done before, but I'm like scratching my head to figure out what that is. Having a two match series where they each win one, that's not exactly groundbreaking. No, it it's not. And look, he could be he could absolutely be just talking about this is a generational family story, which I mean in modern pro wrestling, I don't know that you've had two people from the same bloodline, the same lineage, kind of. Um you know, vying for who is the the chief of the dynasty like yeah. that. That could that could totally be what that he's referring be to, because that that is a unique story. Like, you know, I, I don't know that that's really been told um, too often or, or on this uh, on this level anyways. Um, so, look, it, it could all just be to promote the biggest, you know, so they can call it the biggest WrestleMania of all time again. And if that's the goal, which is WWE's thing right now is let's make it the biggest of all time. Then sorry, Cody. You yep. know, as much as I'm stumping for you, pal, <laughs> welcome to, uh, you know, you're going to be fighting Damian Priest, buddy. Yeah, maybe I get that briefcase, Cody. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Uh, let's talk about this. So we spoke Wednesday about Tony Khan's Twitter meltdown, criticizing WB for booking Jinder Mahal in a World Heavyweight Championship match against Seth Rollins, despite Jinder not winning a match in, what, about a year? And he... Hook, setting him up as an opponent... For AEW champion Samoa Joe. So in a recent Wrestling Reserve Radio, Brian Alvarez reported on the reaction of AEW talents backstage uh, to Tony Khan's latest Twitter tirade. These transcripts come to you from Wrestle Talk. This is what Alvarez said. I'm not gonna do an Alvarez voice. Here's the thing. It's Friday. Get... Come on, have some fun. Friday. <laughs> Let me dr drink the rest of my tea and maybe I'll get a little pep in my step. Till then, not gonna happen, Steve. Quote, here's the thing. I got a lot of tweets. It was the exact same thing as last time. I got a lot of tweets from people in AEW who were like, why is he doing this on Twitter? This is embarrassing. That's what they said. They said it last time, too. I'm sure he's aware of it. But he sees this as, quote, 
quote within the quote. Look at all this engagement I get for these tweets, and then I can tweet out some promotion for some matches for Wednesday, and I'll, uh, it'll help boost the rating. That's why he does it. It didn't work this week, Tony. You're under 800,000. Yeah, yeah. I know the um, demo was up, but... Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the, the the Joe uh, Swerve uh, the highest, Hangman. The highest rated... Uh, popped a the really show. good number. It was like, like 915 yeah. or something like that. So that was, yeah. that was something to look at. Um, yeah, so the ironic part of this, dude, is it might actually help the Raw rating. I know. Because... Prior to that tweet, and again, you know, there is some debate, I guess, to be had about whether or not Twitter is real life or not. I think that there's, you look at the reaction to Chris Jericho, and I'm sure Chris Jericho would tell you, yeah, Twitter's real life. Um, so before this, like, I don't know that anybody really cared to see Seth Rollins versus Jinder Mahal. You know, it's like, eh, yeah. what do we, you know, we know what's going to happen here. But exactly. now the outcome seems certain. Yes. But he brought so much, at least in the Twitter sphere, he brought so much attention to it. And he's such a, I mean, God, I want to say polarizing personality. But at this point, you know, polarizing, there's like sort of two aspects to it. I don't know if anybody saw what he was doing in a positive light besides like the sweatiest of AEW sweaties. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that he kind of like, you know, this is sort of a butts and seats moment, isn't it? Like, oh, Jinder Mahal, he's going to put butts and seats. And then it kind of causes people to rally to Jinder's cause. Hey, let's exactly. go watch that match and 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 support the guy. I mean, I could that could be a total reach. But no, I kind of I think there's it's I generated there's some it. buzz for him, hasn't there it? Has. And, and, and to Jinder's credit, he's cultivated that buzz. You know, and a, a lot of people are rightly critical of his title reign for a variety of reasons. But I don't think anybody was critical of. The shape he got himself into and what he did given what he was given yeah. with that opportunity. Right. You know, you can go to all sorts of metrics, data to show that that title reign was bad for WWE. Yeah. And the creatively, the creative behind that title run, his stories he was involved in, which isn't, which is out of Ginger's hands, not good. Yeah. Right. Some of it, very, very bad. Yeah. That being said, he took what he was given and did the most what 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 he did the most with it that he could. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I, I think uh, you know most people when they look at it as objectively as they can would probably come to the same conclusion. He got himself mm -hmm. in amazing shape. Yeah, he did. His presentation was really good. It was, and he took he was given a turd to work with. It tried to do the best he could with that turd. Yeah, he did. You know, and and I think people he's he's been in, in WB for the most part for a shoot I don't know a decade something like that mm -hmm. long time and and it's going to be interesting to see if this kind of turn of events is going to lead to him getting momentum that WB wish he had when he was actually champion. And I'm not saying that Ginger is going to beat Seth by a stretch of the imagination. That's not mm -hmm. going to happen. Yeah. But in terms of getting a bit of a groundswell of fan support behind mm -hmm. him, yeah, something that didn't happen the first time. And again, this is going to, you're right. This could be a test to see how much, how, how, how much Twitter and real life intersect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And if it's a situation where gender comes out for his match against Seth and gets a good fan reaction, gets mm -hmm. a good pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, be it, 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 I suspect, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this. I suspect for kind of obvious reasons, maybe a W Twitter and real life, when it comes to crowd reaction, probably a bit more, probably a bit more overlap there. But the middle part w of that Venn diagram is probably much larger than the WB one. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because like WWE, it, it is, you know, look, there's a lot of fans there, but, you know, there's obviously a lot of families there. They they promote it as like a family show. This is a place to take your families to. Well, when CM Punk made that reference to AEW, that one promo he did, it was crickets. You know, we never talked about it because it was during the holiday season, but I was kind of curious what you had to say about that one because that was a, a tribute to the troops show. Yeah. And look, it was a packed venue. Um, a lot of troops there who I don't know, might have just gone to the WWE show because they got comp tickets from the government. Entirely possible, but I mean, it was still a full venue. It wasn't because you know, when, like a what majority I, of, yeah. of, of troops there. What I did notice also was when drew made kind of a reference like, hey, it's been a month and you're still here. That did get a pop. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like overwhelming, but there was a reaction to it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I always kind of wondered if that was more 
the crowd, but maybe, or, or maybe it was just a crap joke that didn't land. I think that's where I sort of came down on it went back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I look, man, I hope, I hope, I think it'd be, I think everybody involved would be tickled pink, including Seth Rollins. If Jinder Mahal got a great reaction and especially, could you imagine if they put on the match? We know Seth Rollins can put on mm-hmm. and they give Jinder some hopes. But what if they, but what if they book it that way? Where, <laughs> what if they, what if they sort of book it where Seth is playing a little heel and Jinder's playing a little baby face? That could be kind of fun. I and don't think they're they going to do, do that. But. You know what they should do is have mm-hmm. Damian Priest try to cash in, and Ginger's like, you cost me the title, and then Ginger could feud with Damian Priest. There you go. There you go, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I hope, I honestly do hope that Triple H sees Ginger as somebody that, hey, you know what? I could roll with this guy in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. I can put him mm-hmm. in you know, a situation where he'd be a strong mid-carter, you know, yeah. a guy who's sort of in the mix with – you know, the Alpha Academy guys and freaking Bronson Reed and, and yeah. Ivar, you know? Yeah. I think I think I think something could be made there. I think Chinder he's a really charming guy. Like whenever you see him, they sort of out of care. He seems like the loveliest guy, you know? Yeah. I always want to yeah. see those types succeed. And he seems like a, a complete total professional. He does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and and like I said, everything they've given him, whether it's good or absolute garbage, he's like, All right, I'm gonna make the best of this. I wanna see I wanna see twenty twenty four be Jinder's uh uh, re- uh, pff, what am I thinking of? Reclamation project. There we go. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm trying to think of something that's not retribution. What am I thinking of? Redemption. Redemption. Thank you. That's the one. We're doing this at God. It's already 10:55 in the morning. Larson, let's yeah, go ahead and pay. Eleven o'clock. <laughs> uh, so this episode is sponsored by Better Help. You know, Larson. What's that, Steve? There's a saying that makes the rounds anytime the calendar turns to a new year. Maybe you've heard of it. Mm. New year, new you. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Around this time of year, so many of us focus on how to change ourselves rather than spotlight what we're doing right. And therapy can help you find your strengths so you can ditch those wild resolutions and make changes that actually stick. You know, I've talked a lot about how severe anxiety disrupted my life in my mid-20s and how therapy helped me learn the tools I needed to better cope with that anxiety. But therapy also helped me recognize and reinforce what I was doing right which helped me get back on a path becoming a happier, healthier, more productive Larson. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is completely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. All you got to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and then you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash raw today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help. H E L P dot com slash raw. And before we get back to the show, real quick here, Larson, we're on a uh, a quest, a voyage, a, a vision quest, if you will, to uh, reach a certain sub goal. You know, we, we reached we reached a one sub goal, which is one hundred and ninety eight thousand eight hundred ninety one subs uh, on the YouTube channel. And because of that, tomorrow we're doing a 12-hour live stream to celebrate that. So watch us. If you tune in like eight hours deep, you will be pretty miserable at that point. Maybe pretty even miserable. six hours deep. Yeah, maybe even, honestly, even four hours deep. Uh, two hours into it. Yeah, or on the Ready other hand. Call it a day. Maybe we'll be having a ton of fun. But anyways, yeah, tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. Pacific. 1 p.m. Eastern, both on Twitch and YouTube. We'll be doing that. Right now, we're at 199,284. We're so 707 we're like, away. We're a palindrome number away from getting the palindrome whoa. number we want. Oh, wow. 707 subs away. So if you can do us a huge solid, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the notify bell so you always are informed when we go live or when we have a new video go up also if you haven't already hit that thumbs up if you've gotten this deep into the show and you haven't yet hit the thumbs up button you got to ask yourself what am i doing in my life well hit that thumbs up and you're on the road to a successful life and you're giving us much needed validation really more important i have no idea no guarantees about your successful life or not probably honestly if you're watching us probably not so uh but you will be giving us validation will be helping grow yes. going in raw also we have a yes. patreon patreon.com slash steven larson got bonus episodes coming up later on today we got another friendo cast it's episode two uh so you can participate in that ask us questions and watch them listen to the show or uh also i should say 
Get access to the question threads for the recap shows. We're going to be reading questions a little bit later on the show today, and we get those from our patrons and channel members on YouTube. Yep. It's the Friendo Club setup, and finally, you also get access to the Big Blue Predictions Challenges. That's right. We got another one coming up tomorrow for TNA Hard to Gill. It's an advantage round. You yes. Get, you could potentially get one or two point advantage heading into the Royale Rumble coming Correct. up at the uh, end of the month where Michael Keith Thornton is going to be putting his Big Blue title on the line. Whether he knows it or not. Whether he knows it or not. Whether he's a real person or not, we're not sure. But he is a patron YouTube channel member, and he submitted picks. So there you go. We just haven't heard from him. We don't know what picture to use. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know what I'm going to do? Right when we're done here, I'm going to do his, and it's going to be vacant. Can you get uh, Randy Orton doing this pose, but give him the vacant uh, outline and stuff? Oof. Maybe. Or overlay. Possibly. Possibly. I'll give it a shot. It'd be uh, a shame to, to have someone named Michael Mike Orton as champ and not yeah, I agree. With Use that. that somehow, you know. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. Uh, so yeah, uh, there you go. All you got to do is click join on YouTube or go to patreoncom slash Steve and Larson. Uh, so yeah, let's get uh, back to the show. All right, let's talk about this. So uh, we're gonna talk about Sting's last match there at AEW Revolution coming up. Looks to be a packed crowd there as well. They keep on opening up more areas. Yeah, they sold a ton of tickets for Revolution so far. Mm -hmm. well, everybody wants to see this history, and uh, it seems like the Young Bucks are gonna be involved in Sting's retirement match at AEW Revolution. Fightful Select and Wrestling Observer have details on how the match came together. Fightful reports that Tony Khan is keen on Sting getting the proper send off and that Sting has had a lot of input into his final into who his final opponents would be and in the latest wrestling observer newsletter those other guys other Dave guys. Meltzer adds this Tony Khan was going to give Sting the option to pick whoever he wanted to face and that would include pretty much anyone on the AEW roster or most other rosters besides WWE since Khan would have given him any match he wanted that involved talent he could have access to when he was asked who he wanted to face, uh, they were his choice, as he loved doing the Forbidden Door 2022 match in Chicago, which was Sting and Allen and Shingo Takagi versus the Bucks and El Fantasmo. The Young Bucks were originally going to take more time off before returning, but Sting asked them, and they weren't about to turn that down. End quote. So maybe it's possible that this huge transformation, including mustache and spy v. spy uh, attire, yeah. Maybe they're like, hey, we're going to come back as bad guys anyways. So we'll, you know, to, to enhance your story, we'll come back as bad guys earlier. Accelerate and, the, the yeah. bad guy process. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's neat. Hey, you know what, man? I'm all for it. Then if that's what the stinger wants, that's what the stinger should get. I do think that they probably should add Ric Flair to this match in a wrestling capacity. Maybe Brandon Cutler can be on the Young Bucks team. What do you think about that, Lars? Uh, that's a horrible idea. I don't want to see anybody fall asleep in the middle of the ring. <laughs> or worse, Lars. Or worse. I don't want to see that. No, Ric Flair, less physical involvement, not more. I saw that clip the other day again. We were trying of, to get out of the ring. Yeah. Trying to get out of the ring. And what I realized, Larson, is that he was basically just having a match with tight jeans or with tight pants because, yeah. like, they weren't as bendy in the, in the crotchal area. Uh, and so, so he, he couldn't, couldn't lift you know. The leg or the second rope. A little too tight. A little too perhaps, tight. Perhaps. Perhaps that, that played a factor. You know, I mean, yeah, tire. Sting Slides. has has earned the right to to decide who he faces in his final match. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's given his body this business for what forty years almost. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. about. Um, and if the Young Bucks are his choice of, of opponents for his final bout, awesome, awesome. I it, the, the question is going to be: I wonder if Sting's philosophy of like, how do you go out? Do you go out winning? Do you go out on your back? Um, if he's going to go out winning, you know, aces to the Young Bucks for coming out and being like, hey, you know, we're about to be bad guys, so we probably should be winning after our huge transformation, but mm -hmm. we'll do this for the Stinger. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, this, this match, to a degree, kind of exists above continuity because mm, it's non Stinger's yeah. final match. I wonder if it's going to main event revolution. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, and that's probably, honestly, why they're doing, well... Might be one reason why they're doing the triple threat for the title. Mm. Because when Swerve does face, I don't think Samoa, look, they need to really pay attention to that rating. 
because if Samoa Joe was carrying that that pop in the rating, yeah, I don't know if they're gonna want to make him. I, I was, I'll be honest, I was kind of surprised that they had Swerve confront him as soon as he, as early as he did. Yeah, you know, and that's because he confronted him doesn't necessarily mean he's gonna be one of the next challengers per se either. You know. Mm-hmm. They could be setting something up for something further down the line. I mean, I, I would not be surprised given the next pay per view is not till March if it is Swerve versus Hangman versus Joe, and Swerve and Hangman are so you know obsessed with taking each other out that Joe gets the win. Yeah, yeah. I guess you know what they you know what they could do. That's a good point. What they could do is do that triple threat at Revolution. Was it early March? Is that when it is? Yeah, I think March third. So you do that in early March. Um, you have Joe do a bunch of these hook level matches where it's like, hey, he's just going to steamroll people. Yeah. So you do that. Joe comes out of that because of what you just said. Maybe they go to a mm, boy. If that, that's dangerous, you go to a third Hangman Swerve match at like the next pay per view. I don't like Hangman. You think Hangman's got to win one of those, right? Yeah, <laughs> and he hasn't won any of them yet. No, so, he hasn't. So I don't, especially because they're, they look like they're also sort of giving Hangman like a co push yeah. as well. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Yeah, I get, they could wait on Swerve. They could, you know, if they really play out that story, you know, you could do it in the late. So you could do it at um. What are we in January? Yeah, you could do, but you double or nothing would make Joe like a strong champion up until about five time. months. About five months of a title reign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not. But then terrible. you also got to factor in Wembley all in. They're gonna, they're going to want to have a huge title match there. Maybe they'll have Osprey a uh, challenge for the AEW title. Oh, Osprey versus Joe at, at Wembley. And you'd think Osprey would probably have to win that match. They're not going to have uh, Osprey's not going to win the world title two months after he gets there. Well, it'll be it's coming in March. It'll be five months after he gets there. March, April, May, June, to August. No, no. Oh, all it's on in August. August. You're right. You're right. July, yeah. August. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Juno's Forbidden Door, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They're they're not gonna get a they're not gonna get a big number like that rating did for Joe with Osprey. Not off not out the gate, anyways. That's not yeah. gonna happen. They have to build for it, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how Tony Khan treats his title run. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. Uh, you want to answer some questions? Would you like to answer some questions, Mr. Lee? Answer some you questions. You wanna look at the television? You okay? Uh, I'm, like I'm one alive. person get one person our audience gets that joke yeah <laughs> it's worth doing if one person gets it <laughs> it's, yeah it's very much worth doing uh east side review says what's your favorite wrestler slash manager combo and what manager and wrestler combo would you create using the whole of wrestling history favorite wrestler manager combo I feel like there's an obvious answer that I'm not thinking of right now. I mean, clearly it's Jimmy Hart and Hulk Hogan. No. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Not for me. Nope. Uh, Well, how about uh, Bobby? Well, Bobby Heenan. I mean, Andre the Giant was part of the the Heenan family. You know, when it was Heenan and Perfect and Ric Flair and WB. Oh, that's a good group right there. That was solid. That was a solid solid group. Yeah. You tell they all like each other. Exactly. Um, how about, I mean, uh, uh, Heyman and Punk were really good together. How about Francine and Shane Douglas? More of a valet okay. than a manager, but same that's, kind of deal. That's not bad. That's good. That's good. probably, you know what? Probably no. You know what it is? You know what it is? Ellering and the Road Warriors. Yeah. Cause like, apparently he actually took, he was actually, he was their, actually manager. their manager. Yeah. He actually <laughs> managed their finances and booked their travel and all that. To me, the actual legitimacy of the managerial role is like what takes it up here. Elevates it, it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah, Heyman and Punk were good. They played off each other well. You know, I feel like Heyman and Punk was one of those where it was like, it was like a audio slave. Yeah, it's really good, but it probably should be a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. What about like, Bill Alfonso and RVD? That was awesome. Him, RVD, and Sabu together, they were great. Yeah. they. Were, oh, man, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Uh, Gregory Fiella here says, what other tag team should have tiny, thin mustaches like the Young Bucks? Uh, you know what I think would have really worked? Just, hmm. I don't know why they came to mind. Cause maybe because Bobby Roode did have a really killer mustache. Yeah. The dirty dogs. 
Oh, him and Dolph. Him and Dolph. Dolph has like a little thin mustache. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. What if uh, uh, Damian Priest and Finn Ballard had thin mustaches? Perfect. That's a good one, yeah. That's a good one. I like it. Uh, Heather Wright says, Meltzer has said that the Rock Roman is not going to happen in Elimination Chamber. Uh, oh, uh, she just asked, how does Cody get his story arc at WrestleMania 40 now? The Damian Priest versus for the briefcase. For the briefcase. Maybe he cashes in at the end of the show. <laughs> He's like, I didn't win the Rumble. Didn't win Chamber. Didn't win whatever other, you know, I'm, I'm not the Rock. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I'm going to so, go for this briefcase. Let, let's, let's take a bit of a tangent, but it's related. How are they going to get to Rock Roman then? Punk, if they can do Punk wins the Rumble. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. If that's yeah, what happens, Punk yeah, wins the Rumble. Punk's he, the Rumble. He challenges Seth. Yeah. So that leaves Elimination Chamber. If, which is an if, if they have Rock in mind, they might bypass having a number one contender match at Chamber for the title shot against Roman. Mm-hmm. But let's say they want to have that match and they still want Rock to face Roman. They're not going to have the Rock. Well, he's not going to be at Elimination Chamber, first of all. Right. Like is someone is he going to challenge somebody for the spot? No, they wouldn't do that either because he's having one match and that's against Roman prior to WrestleMania. If that's where the match happens. Oh yeah, it's so. This is why. This is one reason why I don't like it. Zero intrigue because it's what they would do. Roman would come out after Punk wins the Rumble and he's and he's doing that. He comes out and starts gloating that he's going to get to take WrestleMania off. Yeah, because he smashed everybody. Then if smash you smell Cody what the rock smash. is cooking. Then you, yeah, yeah. And then either rock shows up or it does a match chat question. Yep. So that's how they would do it. And that's why it's a bummer because they can't do anything. He's the rock. He's not going to. But then that social media post, it seems really ambitious. Like, it's like, okay, he's getting ready to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Chris Stanton here says, do you feel like Imperium feuding with New Day is setting up for a big E rumble return and subsequent IC title match at Mania? I would love it. I miss Big E. Yeah. I'd love for him to come back. Yeah. Um, you know, he hasn't said anything regarding a return. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pessimistic that would happen, but gosh, I'd love it. I would love it. Yeah. No, I would love it too. Uh, obviously I'm, I'm not getting my hopes up on Big E wrestling again. I'm just not, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, God, I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him on commentary every yeah. week. Oh yeah. God. I would love for that to happen. Hey, what do you make of the, the Kevin Patrick thing? I mean, I, I can't say I'm shocked. You think he's this is mess. I don't want to. I look. I hope he keeps a job within WWE. Definitely. Definitely. I, I want the guy to succeed. But if the idea is he's got to do better, step he's up, got to bring it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that he's got another gear. <laughs> like, like I, I don't. Know. Like I just don't. I I don't know that he's going to be on commentary. Pal. Like I thought he was really good at interviews. Yeah, he is good at interviews. Yeah, commentary ain't his thing though. Yeah. I mean, they got someone who's really good at commentary down in NXT with Vic Joseph. He's great. I know he is. He's really good. He's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sinister here asks, how shocked are you guys on a scale of 1 to 10 that Ric Flair is pushing to be more physical in AEW? So if 1 is no shock and 10 is totally shocked, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the negative in terms of the lack of shock. Yeah. I've got, I've got, I'm, I'm basically grounded. You know, you can't get yeah. shocked. I think you ground, no shock whatsoever. No shock. No shock, shock goes away. No shock. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to think of something that has negative shock value to it. Not an electrician. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I'm with you, you mentioned ground. The ground is what prevents shock. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Ground. I'm, I'm a dead car battery, Larson. I'm oh, there you dead. go. No juice whatsoever. Uh, uh, Jonathan Vieira says, how important? We talked about this a second ago. We're talking about what the good wrestling manager combos are. He says, how important are non-wrestling personalities like managers, interviewers, GMs, et cetera, to world building? Oh, I mean, especially, you know, there's been plenty of good managers. I really miss, and I, I feel like they've allowed, Triple H has allowed the interviewers to loosen up a little bit, but allowing the interviewers to have personality yeah other events like with dasha especially it's like he he just 
removes any semblance of personality from her as a performer on TV. Yeah, right. And it doesn't make for interesting interviews. Yeah, no. And and, and I mentioned Mean Gene. I don't necessarily say this strictly for nostalgia's sake because he was the interviewer, you know, that worked WB when I grew up. But he wouldn't just ask a question to hold the mic, you know? There was a back and forth. He was an arbiter of chaos. He was, he was and like if people if would someone, come in and he'd be like, hey, line, wait a second, you can't do yeah, that. <laughs> exactly. Someone got out of line, he'd try to put them in their place. You know, yeah. there was a give and take. There was a back and forth, and I miss that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I miss yeah. that with the interviewers because it makes the world feel more alive. You know, like, it's what's interesting about that is when you look at WWF's product back uh, pre-Vince buying it, mm -hmm. uh, under Vince Sr., obviously trying to emulate a sports broadcast, and so the the interviewers were very, you know, I mean, usually the interviewer was like Vince, you know, he'd homeboy would come down from a, a fight and go, like, oh, well, what do you think about that? The beauty of wrestling. And, he, you know, they'd be like, well, Vince, let me tell you. And then when he decided that, oh, we're going to need to be pulling from all these colorful characters around these different territories because we're going to be this really larger than life cartoony thing. And that's going to mm -hmm. make us national. And it worked. Then you have guys like Mean Gene who are yelling at the wrestlers back. You know, he's not taking any guff and he's part of the story. Yep. It's bizarre that like, you know, during Vince's last like, you know, 10 years or whatever, he really went or maybe more. He really went back to let's have the interviewers be really boring and not part of the story. Yeah. And it's like you had something you're so you're absolutely right. They had such some, something so good with Mean Gene and like uh, Alfred Hayes. Guys like that that were just really good interviewers. And then, you, you know, in the Attitude Area, even you get to Matt, Michael Cole and he's getting wedged by, you know, DX and he's a very low-key personality. Yeah. I, I, maybe, maybe when the Attitude Era came around, he just was like, you know what? I want these characters to be – it's kind of like uh, – <laughs> this is a really dorky analogy. Not surprisingly, a Star Trek one. Roddenberry wanted all the humans to act like chill, like yeah. almost emotionless to emphasize when aliens would show up the like you know how how unique they were basically yeah 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 um but maybe that was the idea cuz like michael cole when he showed up that was really when it was like okay so this dude's going to be chill and then everybody else is going to be it's going to be madness around him you know maybe there is an element of realism that he wanted to put into that could be the product you know i don't know that could be that's one i mean it, it doesn't happen often but in AEW there's flashes of that like lexi Especially oh, on yeah. Ring of Honor with Athena. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know we see it every now and again in AEW, but it, it'd be great if it was something that was more prevalent. Renee it's, it's, is much more of a mean gene. Yeah. than Renee in WWE. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I li I like that about her. You know, there's some of the interaction. Like I love when her and Eddie would get into it over Mox. I yeah. love that stuff. I thought yeah, it was yeah, really or her good. Her Hangman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Ty Moore here asks, if Sting retired at Revolution in a singles match rather than the tag we're seemingly getting, who would be the best person, who would be the worst person for him to face apart from Flair, of course? And I'm also going to say no Darby Allen. Okay, yeah, because that's obvious, yeah. That's an obvious opponent. Yeah. Can't be Cody now, even though they teased it. Oh, that's the match Cody really wanted, though. I know, I know. This is what you do. You get in the phone. I understand he's got some kind of contract with WWE. You get on the phone with Mark Calloway. Oh, and you try to get can't call him the Undertaker. Maybe you can call him the Dead Man. Oh, well, <laughs> show up in no, AEW for bro. one more match against Sting. Hey, listen, this <laughs> dude he does have a contract. So if you're able to get him, he's gonna come with the Undertaker tag. Um, but that getting him in the first place would be a miracle. I know. I, know. I love the idea. I he, I he's, he's the Dead Man. He's uh, yeah the. I don't know. What's another name for Undertaker? The Mortician. Mortician. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. The more, I don't know why Vince, old school Vince yeah, is doing his intro. What a maneuver. What a Mortician. Um, Jeff Jarrett. Uh, yeah, that's good. To, or 100 Jeff Jarrett's. Even who's better. got, who's like, besides Darby? Oh, oh, oh. Malachi. He yeah, bitches good. about not having singles matches, and I was like, who's got the mystique? It's Malachi. Yeah, Malachi would be good. I'm going to lose to a 65-year-old man. Better than being another goddamn trios. I know. <laughs> Still better than tag matches all the time. <laughs> I don't know. They want me to do trios. <laughs> uh, I, they want me to do trios. I need to, I need to come. 
I really need to come up with a design that's like all heavy metal and goth and dark and shit. Only and it does says, trios. It says they want me to do trios. I like. He always refers to Tony Khan as they. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, man, it ain't it, it ain't all of AEW. No, it's, it's one, one dude. It's Tony Khan. It's one dude. They want me to do trios, but it's like all metaled out or gothed out or whatever, like a yeah, House of Black. It's almost indecipherable what it says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want me to do trios. <laughs> uh, Doc Hensla here says, if you were running for political office, what current wrestler would you pick to endorse you, and what would your slogan be? Oh, dude, look, I'm going to get The Rock to endorse me because he's going to be president. I'm surprised you had to say Cody, so I'll say Cody. He could probably teach me a thing or two about how to uh, maneuver the political waters. That's a good point. Given yeah, that he seems so point. adept at it already. Yeah, 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 yeah. What would your slogan be? Oh, man, he's the one. <laughs> well, you say I'm the one. You're the one running, not The Rock. Uh, he's well. No, it's Steve here. He's the one. Oh, Steve's the one. Steve's the one. Yeah. So usually, I like in the past, my my catchphrase was not going to happen. It's going to be, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. That actually does sound like a like a decent yeah. That sounds like a decent uh, phrase. You know, I want to uh, get on back of trains, go like town to town on the back of trains like they used to back in the day. Exactly. But like nobody would show up. Yeah. People like the train. Train. We're trained to run through. We don't see a YouTube trains. channel. Uh, Stephen M. Smurf Galloway asks, goofiest thing in wrestling right now? Tony Storm. <laughs> Doesn't make a lick of sense, but it's awesome. It's so great. Yeah, it is pretty good. It's great. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah. pretty goofy, though. Uh, Heel Tom says, uh, given the choice, <laughs> he's... This is actually good. I was confused for a second. He says, hey, guys. Hey. Hey. He said, hey. Hey. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. If given the choice between the two, would you guys rather see a triple threat between Punk, Cody, and Seth, night one, or Rock, Roman, Cody, night two? I'll be honest. Part of me would love to see Punk, Cody, Rollins, because it's everybody who's trying to stick it to Seth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know? know, like know. Cody beat him three times and then he got him on his own war games team called Team Cody. Punk well, comes out. He's running him down. And so I want that, Rollins to beat put, both guys. Put Drew McIntyre in there, too. Yeah, he's trying to stick it. Yeah, but here's the thing about Drew, though, is that Rollins stuck it to Drew several times already. So I kind of feel bad for Drew. But if he does like a double stomp at the same time with both Cody and Punk, I'd be Seth Rollins. I'd be Maggie. I'd be Seth Rollins' biggest fan. You say Seth is the goat at that but point, huh? He's the one. That's what you do. Is that he stomps these guys, and then he goes, "Oh my back!" But then he pins him, and then he gets up. Oh my back! He sells back, double stomp on no, that's Cody. What he does. Punk. He sells back down for pin. After he gets up from pin, he rips off the kinesiology tape. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that's good. He yeah. starts, you yeah. know, like doing back bends and stuff. Like my back's <laughs> fine now. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dave Matushek. This might be our last one unless you have any pressing ones over there. All right. It says, do you have a favorite wrestler with a hot dog tan that is not Hulk Hogan? That dude looked like the the deepest 7-Eleven hot dog, man. Those ones oh, that are just wow. like screaming red orange. Yeah, they've been there for a couple days, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just sweaty as all get out. Oh, I don't do honestly like I don't know <sighs> like who else had one even close to as deep as his yeah like Triple H did a point yeah he did yeah 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 but nowadays like, nowadays like MJF gets some shit at Walmart and sprays it on lazily and starts running everywhere But not yeah, a lot of anybody people. does. I don't know if anybody does a tanning bed like that anymore. I don't know how safe it is. It's not. It's not safe. Yeah, I don't think it is. You're just blasting your body with UV rays. It's not good for you. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, I can't think of anybody, at least recently. There's one down at the Planet Fitness, and Lacey really wants to. She wants to start using that. I'm like, I don't know, man. But then, like, it, honestly, like, it is actually safer than me going out playing basketball in 106 degree heat with no 
sunblock on. I got. Well, yeah, you got to wear sunscreen. You go outside, yeah. you got to wear sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah. You should be doing that always. Yeah. 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 Uh, we can end on this one, I guess. Shavon here says, if the Endeavor deal happened five years ago, how different would the roster be for WB and maybe AEW? Would you, uh, who would you guys probably think would be the current champions today? So if the Endeavor deal happened in 2018 as opposed to 2023. So move everything. Incl- I'm sorry, does part of the question include the Vince stuff? Sure. Yeah, everything happened five years earlier. I don't oh, know if we'd have oh an my AEW. God. Probably wouldn't have an AEW. I think Triple H might have been able to seal a deal with Kenny, and then the rest of them would have gone with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for sure, at the very least, if AEW did happen, Adam Cole would still be firmly in WWE. Yeah. Same with Keith Lee. Keith Lee might yeah. be our champion right now, yeah. or he might be in the Cody role right now. Yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah. that's a possibility. Like FTR I, could still be in WWE. There's a lot of, you know, p- people that came up through NXT, Sasha especially. Probably. Yeah. Sasha and Naomi, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I think it, yeah, it's it. That's one of those things that's like, golly, I mean, that's six years now, um, or you know, coming up depending on when it would have happened. So yeah, that's it, it, a pretty seismic shift right there. Yeah, it would be. It'd be pretty yeah. massive. Pretty massive. Anyways, that's gonna do it for the show today. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Tomorrow we got our twelve hour stream, so come join oh, us gosh. for that. Oh my goodness, gracious. I'm not prepared for that whatsoever. Neither but- am I. We right. shall, we we shall, we shall do it nonetheless. Ten a.m. Pacific. That's one Eastern. We'll go for twelve hours, and then we're going to stop. You got that right. I better make sure my uh, GTA is updated before. Oh, I, I know. I got to do that. I'm about to hop on my PS5. Wake up tomorrow. Till next time. We'll see you around. Goodbye. <laughs>